Hey fellow tennis nerds, welcome to this video dealing with Wilson tennis rackets. I'm trying with this series of videos to explain the different brands and their selection of rackets so you get a better understanding why you would choose one racket and so on, what racket could work for you. Some players have a certain preference for one brand over another completely makes sense to me. It could be the grip shape, could be your, your racket history, could be that you just like the feel of a certain racket. This video deals with Wilson, a legendary brand on the market, um, offering clash for you know a lot of comfort but still giving you power and spin. And there's the Ultra, which is powerful for the Ultra 100 or Ultra Pro, which is a premium control. And there's the Pro Staff, which is the most iconic brand used by Fed and a lot of other players uh, where you have control with a bit of a stiffer feel to it, more for attacking players. They also have the blade, more of kind of a versatile player frame. And then you also have the burn, which is a bit more for intermediate players, giving you some extra power and spin on your shots, uh, where the burn and the ultra 100 are pretty close, but the burn also has some S uh, models, which is a spin effect, so more open patterns for more easy spin generation. And they've also added now the Pro Labs where you can get kind of like Pro Stock style rackets. The 6195 back there, you have the Wilson Blade Pro and the Wilson Ultra Pro. Definitely more for advanced level players with high swing weights, ready for some uh, customization. Uh, we'll talk about that a bit as well. But uh, so this video deals with Wilson rackets. I hope it gives you more information about Wilson and their current offering. And if you have any questions, just put them in the comments below. I read all the comments there. Thanks a lot for watching. If you need help finding a racket, check out the Tennis Nerd consultation at tennisnerd.net slash shop. And if you want to support Tennis Nerd and get more content, you become a patron at patreon.com slash tennis nerd. That's all for this one. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis. Okay, here we go. At the Tennis Warehouse website, we click Wilson to find Wilson rackets. They have an explanation of choosing a Wilson racket and they offer a 30-day confidence guarantee through Wilson at if you buy a Clash racket by March 31st, not that many days left. If you aren't satisfied, you can return it within 30 days. So that's a pretty cool offer uh, for you who want to try out Clash. As you know, the Wilson Tour Pros, there are quite a few of them. Fed, Tsitsipas, Bautista Gut, for example. We have Del Potro, we have Dimitro, it keeps us on rolling uh, with a bunch of different names. Uh, the roster of sponsored players, both on the women's and in the men's game, is pretty, pretty significant. Let's start with Wilson Blade. It's the first in the families of rackets. They have a new racket that I haven't tried, the Blade 98 version 6 without countervail. Although it features the cosmetic of the 2016 Blade, this racket lacks countervail, giving it the crisp and connected feel of earlier generations. Quite a high stiffness, a bit surprised to see that, but this is, sounds like a very interesting racket at a nice beefy swing weight. They do offer also the 98 Lite version 6, so something to think about, but the most recent one is the version 7, and that has feel flex technology, which makes the racket a lot more flexible, uh, better on the arm, but also uh, giving you less power than previous blades. So some players love this. Uh, I did like this a lot more than the countervail, but uh, some guys I hit with, they don't like it at all. So that's a personal thing as, as always with tennis rackets. It's kind of a versatile frame in the middle of the tennis racket landscape. 305 grams unstrung. When you add strings, they've measured the average at 11.4 ounces or 323 grams. Balance is 4.7 light, so this is why it's called a blade. It has more weight in the head, so it cuts through, through the air. Swing weight, pretty high with these uh, versions, 328. You need to be a pretty advanced player to handle the latest blades unless you go for the 100L. 62 stiffness, so they reduce the stiffness quite a bit. That used to be mid-60s from the version 6, and even previous versions were stiffer than this, except for the end blade, which, which was below 60. A nice and thin 21 millimeter beam. Very much a performance racket. You need to generate your own pace with this frame. The 1820 is more demanding than this one, the 1619, but they're, both of these rackets have a high swing weight. If you're an intermediate player, you need to be a pretty ambitious intermediate level player to play with this frame. We can look at the 1820 and see the difference. Um, not much. It's the same beam. It's the same 
uh, specs in general, but the swing weight is higher. And that's what I noticed when I played the 1820 and the 1619 is that the 1820 is a little bit more demanding. You won't get the free lift of the 1619, but it's even more precise and plows through the ball more thanks to the higher swing weight. So interesting update to the Wilson Blade line. Uh, it's one of their best sellers uh, for a good reason. Very versatile frame for all court players, but definitely not easy to use. What else is there in the Blade line? Yes, they have lighter versions. They have oversized versions. 100 light that Henrik reviewed on Tennis Nerd looks the same, but much lower swing weight. A little bit stiffer, but pretty comfortable the, thanks to the feel flex, thicker beam, and almost even balance. So uh, this one is quite a different frame from the other ones. This one is more of a tweener frame, free power, low weight, uh, relatively low swing weight. It gives you more help with spin and pace. Then we have the 104 version 7 that used to be Serena's, the racket. This one is very flexible for this kind of frame. 60 stiffness with 104 inch uh, square inch racket and a 27 inch length you're looking at usually a pretty beefy swing weight but this one is relatively fast thanks to the low weight so it's only 306 grams with strings or 10.8 ounces so this one is the most maneuverable extended length racket I've seen in in this kind of category otherwise you would find them with these massive uh, power frames more for kind of veteran and doubles players so interesting if you want power but you don't want any kind of stiffness, uh, you like a plusher feel, uh, you like a flexible string bed. So what they've changed with this one is that they've gone from 1819, which is, a, I think, a better choice, that's my opinion, and more controlled. This one is 1619, so they opened it up, made it more tweener style, more spin friendly, uh, but for what I heard from Henrik, it can launch the ball a little bit, so uh, I, I think they should have kept the 1819 for the lower trajectory, but that's, uh, that's a personal thing as, as everything else. Last but definitely not least, the Wilson Blade uh, Serena Williams 102 autograph. I've, I've reviewed it on this channel, 102 square inches, 28 inches long. So this is what Serena actually uses, similar to what they did with the Federer frame. Pretty low weight, but the swing weight is heavy. It's massive, 350. You need to be quite a player to handle this. Will give you lots of power, stiffness, high. When you, you know, time the ball well, you move well with this frame, it's quite a lot of fun to use this because you get so much power out of it. But it wasn't easy on the one-hander. It's a racket I enjoyed, but I could never see myself switching. If you like a really powerful frame and you're, you're not afraid to swing a 28 inch long racket perhaps you want more more help on serve or, and then this racket is, is should be should be considered but the swing weight is even more than what fed plays with so the blade is what they call the feel uh, category uh, let's go over to what they call the control category the wilson clash i don't agree with this i don't think clash is a controlled uh, series of rackets they're flexible, but they still offer power and spin. That's the big selling point of the Clash. You get kind of tweener style performance from a much more flexible racket. So I don't know why they want to call it control. Yes, it might give a bit more control than uh, a pure drive, for example, but it's still, uh, that's not the selling point here. It's not control. And sometimes it can be a bit erratic due to that flex technology so I, I don't really agree with uh, the control i would rather put comfort there so people understand that this is the main selling point you get a tweener style frame that's comfortable and you don't have to worry about stiffness I do love the clash i think it's a great line of rackets it has downsides with sometimes launching the ball a little bit but in general i'm very happy with the clash and they deserve a lot of praise for going this extra mile and developing something very different in the marketplace. The Clash 100 is the best seller of all these frames. What stands out to the Clash, it's their free flex and stable smart. You play with a very, very flexible frame, 55 stiffness. You rarely see that these days. Low swing weight, very maneuverable frame. Still, it's pretty stable for what it is. Perhaps thanks to the thick beam, can be a little bit uh, unstable at times when you hit with like players who hit with a heavy heavy shot but then you could go for the tour uh, which gives you more stability clash 100 tour bump up the weight we do 310 grams on strong instead of 295 around 11.5 ounces 326 grams with strings still very headlight maneuverable frame low ish swing weight but i like this 322 is is good for 100 square inch racket i think this should be the choice of most intermediate players to go for the tour straight away that's my opinion because it's still very very easy to swing you're gonna get power you're gonna get spin but you're still gonna get comfort 
Sometimes, as I said, the ball will launch a little bit with the Clash series because uh, I don't know if there's something in the technology. It's just like flexible. And one other downside is that the strings, because of all this movement from the string bed, might not last as long as they do in other rackets. For more control, we'll go to the Clash 98. My favorite Clash, it's just become that because I am revisiting it at the time of recording this. And it's a racket I really like, but I add some lead tape to mine. I felt like I needed to do that. I didn't like it as much first time around, but um, I've changed my forehand a bit. I've... Uh, uh, played around with the specs a little bit more and I think I found something I really enjoy so still ultra low flex a little bit beefier swing weight slightly thinner beam they could maybe have made it even thinner but then it's not a clash perhaps so uh, you get into blade territory uh, so the beam is probably to kind of give that power despite the, the low flex but the 98 is better on flatter shots it's better for the one-handed backhand it's not as powerful as the Clash Pro or the normal Clash. It doesn't give you quite the same amount of spin, but it's much more controlled. So for the advanced player, I think the Clash 98 is the right option to go for. Quite a string-hungry frame as well, despite the 98 square inch head size. But if you're open to restringing your frame, this one is very, very good. Clash also offers the 100L, which is lighter. Um, at even lower, swing weight is, is much lower at 300. So this one is, is pretty pretty easy to swing and they also have an oversized racket and an ultra light racket so the oversized is interesting if you need more help you have maybe a shorter swing movement or you're suffering from some kind of injury that that will make it difficult to um, kind of do a proper swing or whatever i think the clash 108 is a nice option that's about the clash family let's go to the pro staff so pro staff is all about precision it's the most iconic of the lines they have recently released the version 13 of the pro staff night 7 RF-97, which is the heavy autograph racket that Fed uses, very demanding, very nice when you play well, but it's tough to play well with as well. The ProSat 97L, which is a lighter version with a bit more weight in the head. We have the Ultra Light, very, very light. They still sell the Countervail, which I didn't like at all. A bit stiffer, not as nice feel, uh, but a bit more power from that one compared to the new 97 Pro Staff. So I've reviewed this one. You can look at my channel for the review. Uh, I thought this was a great update, much better feel. Despite the semi-high stiffness, it felt pretty good. So the new Pro Staff version 13 has a more uh, comfortable layup. A lot of these things that they mention in racket marketing uh, can just be marketing or, uh, you know, more fancy ways of saying pretty basic stuff. So don't get too uh, bogged down into that. And it's all about how the racket feels and how it performs for you. Don't read too much into the marketing. I mention it because it's uh, my job and, and what I, I'm kind of interested in how they engineer rackets but sometimes it's it's just what it is fancy words 21.5 millimeters so this one is a little bit more powerful than the blade but the swing weight is a bit lower it has more weight in the handle you see that seven points headlight with strings this one actually can benefit from a little bit of lead tape up in the hoop if you're an advanced player i felt like it needed a bit uh, 16 19 crosses quite spin friendly frame but the new one is very very controlled compared to the previous versions but more comfortable i, I heard a lot of players get some arm problems with the previous pro staff with counter I haven't heard any issues with this one and the players that use this and have made the switch are all not looking back so definitely a great update for the Pro Staff 97. Federer version looks the same pretty much gray instead of orange and red. The RF 97 doesn't come with the technology of the uh, other racket. This is the same racket as it's been since the red and black one from six years back pretty much so um it's graphite braided with aramid. There's no 45 degree braid or anything like that. There's no countervail. There's never been any stuff like that. Very raw, just a an, an very nice classy frame. Uh, swing weight has gone down uh, in their uh, measured versions. What Roger uses is 340 swing weight. Uh, I've tried specs similar to Roger's. They're definitely not impossible to use for a rec player or, or that is advanced, but still... Uh, the racket does get heavy uh, it is like a 12.6 ounce frame with strings so it does get heavy after an hour or two you can probably play your best tennis sometimes with this one if you're having that day uh, it's just like rock solid grain on volleys just does everything 
pretty well but when you're having an off day it's really demanding and it can be quite stiff the stiffness is something to consider it can give you wrist issues and shoulder elbow because of the weight and the stiffness a fantastic frame for the days when you're on your game but uh, to, to switch to this as your regular racket all the time well, you pretty much need to be roger federer i think what is the difference with the l the difference here is that Stiffness is a little bit higher because you need to kind of, you know, bump up the stiffness. That has the 45 degree braid, thicker beam to get generate more power. So this is two millimeters thicker across the board, lower swing weight, easier to swing, lower with static weight, around 290 grams unstrung. And the balance is not at all uh, similar because it's more there's more weight in the head. So when you reduce the weight of the racket, you need more weight in the head to make it stable. Otherwise the racket is pretty much unplayable. Uh, so this one is interesting for kind of intermediate players who wants uh, to play with a Roger style frame that looks all blacked out, looks really cool, but still a bit more forgiving, gives a bit more power. So there's some easy tweaks you can do. You can just add a leather grip, maybe wrap a little bit of lead tape around the top of the grip, underneath the leather grip that is, and you have a, a much more headlight balance, a little bit more weight. The racket will feel better, I think, uh, if you spec it up like that. Uh, ultralight, we don't need to go into. It's more of the same, more weight in the head, but less weight overall. So the Ultra is all about power. They don't have a lot of models. There's V3, V2. The specs are not massively different. And one thing that struck me as odd with the Ultra version 3, which looks, I mean, the paint job is, is amazing. It's, it's a really nice looking frame. Uh, obviously subjective, but that's what I think. But what, something that struck me is that there's no dampening or anything that's really focused on comfort in this frame. All this stuff, this is not about comfort. And it has a stiffness of 73 with strings. So you're looking at a stiffness of 76 without strings. That's a very stiff racket. That's the stiffest racket on the market, pretty much. Thick beam, obviously. I didn't notice any real discomfort with this, but this would concern me. So I, I can't really easily recommend this frame if you're looking for a power frame because of that. Because there, when you get up into that stiffness level, it needs to kind of make a difference in the comfort level. It's a typical 100 square inch frame. It actually hit pretty nicely. You do feel the stiffness, but not in a harsh way, but it's just not really a super nice feel. For me, when I recommend rackets, I so much rather go and recommend a clash of any kind than this. It's just so much easier for me to, to stand behind the clash because it's such a comfortable frame or even the, the Wilson Blade 100L, where you can tweak it a bit to your specs, but it's more comfortable. This one is a bit strange to me, but that's a, that's another story. Typical tweener frame, 300 grams on strong, four points head light with strings and a low swing weight. So it's all very typical. Back to Ultra yeah, again, it gets lighter. We can check just quickly. Uh, low weight, so 280 grams unstrung, around 295 with strings, four points head light, same balance low low swing weight very easy swinging experience you get nice power from the frame but not sure uh, how this one plays because i haven't tried it and if we look at the oversized ultra 108 uh, we see also that the stiffness is, is a bit lower swing weight a little bit higher because it's an extended frame by only 0.25 inches uh, which is a, a good way to get used to extended frames is to, to play with this this one has 16 18 string pattern instead of the standard 16 19 for even more spin so that's the ultra family we have the burn 100 version 4 which i tried the burn i would say is their spin category they don't really say that uh, in the marketing but it is spin focused the line i think because they have the s edition still there meaning the spin effect lines this one felt better to me than the ultra the reason being perhaps that the beam is thinner in places swing weight is beefier which i like a bit more weight in the head with this one firm carbon fiber graphite there's no dampening in this one either so maybe they they actually don't contribute to tennis elbow no idea but that, that would be a concern of mine uh, this one actually played nice on flat shots i like that it felt like they had a, a tighter string pattern in the center so uh, other burns this is uh, what one of my friends is using uh, the 100s version 4 what is s spin effect still very stiff 18 mains and 16 crosses so this is a funny thing about the spin effect it's supposed to give you loads of top spin with uh, this uh, kind of uh, strange string patterns so 18 mains and 16 crosses you usually switch them around but this one has fewer crosses for more action on the main string so they move a lot more probably will damage string life a bit but you'll get some fun top spin from this frame so the burn line is their spin line they don't seem to focus too much on that they have the ls which is lighter and the 100 uh, ULS. So it's all about weight difference from the 100S.
Burn and Ultra, more for game improvement frames. Clash is the next line if you want comfort. The two more advanced player lines are the Pro Staff and the Blade. We also have, when it comes to Wilson, we have something called the Pro Lab. So I went to the Wilson website. I searched Pro Labs. You can only get this via wilson.com. I'll add links in the description below so you can check these frames out. I have reviewed one of them only so far, the Blade Pro 1820. Well, technically, I've also reviewed Ultra Pro version 3 because this was uh, a retail racket under the Ultra family, but they, they felt like it didn't really make sense to have it there, which I agree with because it's a power line. This is definitely a control frame. So they moved it up here and they offer two different string patterns for both the Blade Pro and, and Ultra Pro in 6019. So this now you can, if you want more spin or you want more control. They also have the Pro Staff 6195. It's a legendary frame. I've talked about this racket a lot because it's one of my favorite rackets of all time, which I've heard is based on the Hyper Pro Staff mold, uh, which a lot of pros still use. So if we look at the Blade Pro 1619, it has a glossy paint, which the pros usually use. This is based on the H22 Pro Stock mold. If you're a Pro Stock guy, a 21.5 millimeter beam. So sim similar beam, uh, but a little bit thicker. As you can see with the balance, uh, it, it does uh, have a bit more weight in the head. These have a pretty high swing weight. The one I got after stringing it up with a hybrid setup with Olu Power and NXT Comfort went up to 341. So this uh, these are definitely for advanced players. They do feel nice. They're very stable, but I'm not sure that they're that much better than the regular blades, to be honest. That's, that's my feeling after playing with them i did feel like the h22 pro stock feels a little bit different I, I didn't get the chance to play them side by side but that was my feeling the ultra pro is one of my favorite wilson rackets it's uh, very thin based on the h19 really low powered but great feel of this frame great feeling comfort just a racket that gives you exactly what you put into it not as powerful as the blade this one has a smaller head size 97 square inches but a more headlight balance so it's a more traditional player frame the ultra pro much in the vein of a prestige mp or uh, uh, these types of frames last but not least let's look at the hyper pro staff 6195 been around for 30 years or something uh, just a fantastic racket but it's not easy to use 95 square inches heavy heavy weight they only come in 1820 while the original was 1618 so no idea why they don't do two string patterns for these really heavy static weight 332 grams unstrung so you land up at around 350 with strings. Nice. If you hit flat and hard, you have great technique. This racket should be tried because it's a brilliant frame. It, it can feel easier than the weight looks because of the extremely headlight balance. I haven't tried this one yet. I hope to do that. But the design is just glorious, I think. They do have some funky paint jobs and collaborations like a Minions Ultra or a Brito Clash 100 that you can check out if you're into uh, funny colorways and, and having a racket that doesn't look like anything else. They also have a custom program where you can design your own racket and customize them. I wish I could do this, but they don't ship to Malta, so it's not that easy. For example, let's say you want a Pro Staff 97, which is a classy frame. You can do it in all white or quite a lot of options for, for a custom, like you could do with the gold in the top, carbon fiber, whatever you fancy. Next time we look at some other brands, check that out as well. Please tell your tennis friends about Tennis Nerd. Much appreciated. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.